Well, good morning, my friends. We are back in Los Angeles. I picked up my mail as soon as I got home and found out that the shirt that I ordered, they sent the wrong one. So I got a free shirt and they'll be sending the proper shirt soon. Well, good morning, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are all of you doing today? Excellent. Well, of course, we're here in Los Angeles and we're going to go out and do some social distancing vlogging. <laughs> Um, and for me, one of the best places to do that, to get a little bit of exercise and to do a vlog is the cemetery. Now, I was kind of thinking, you know, normally I don't like to do true crime cases that much. It's not really something that interests me. But when I was a teenager, um, you know, when the whole um, Nicole Brown Simpson, Ron Goldman killing happened and OJ was accused of it, that just, that took over the headlines. And I moved out here in uh, March of 2000 went to music school at um, Musicians Institute, and they grouped you together with, um, you know, basically about 25 people that you would share all of your classes with. And those had basically become the people that you became friends with. So um, I was from Ohio, I had moved out here in 2000 at the age of 18, made my first set of friends. And um, we had our first big rainfall in May of 2001, I was kind of surprised growing up in Ohio that we hadn't seen any rain here, but we were getting rain. And a friend of mine was um, a metalhead who had a little bit of recording equipment at his apartment. And he said, hey man, I'm going to mix my new song today. Would you like to come over and give me your thoughts on it and bring your acoustic guitar if you want. We can record something for you. So we went over there and um, I ended up making an entire cover album because it rained for two days. Over that two day span, we, we made this cover album of me doing all these cover songs. And I remember we took a break, turned on Art Bell, because we're recording most of this from basically like 5 p.m. onward, and um, them announcing that Robert Blake's wife had been murdered outside of a restaurant, Bonnie Lee Bakley. And never heard this woman's name before, but I remember when they first started talking about it thinking, for some reason, I have a feeling this is going to become like another O.J. Simpson thing. It's going to be another um, celebrity charged with killing his wife. And sure enough, this woman's name, Bonnie Lee Bakley, who we had never heard before, um, all of a sudden for the next year or more was in the headlines all the time. And Robert Blake would be charged for the murder. So today I wanted to go out and see her grave and talk about this whole story, who she was, this person that really just wanted to be famous in her life. And um, boy, did she ever become famous in such a weird way. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. And today's vlog is gonna be a special Patreon sunglass vlog for Danielle Bruns, but it's actually going to be a Days with Jordan the Lion pair of sunglasses. For the first time, I'm actually going to give my actual sunglasses in one of these Patreon sunglass vlogs. So let's do it. All right, we're heading out to Forest Lawn Hollywood. We're actually gonna be going up the hill to find her. It seems like she's up here in the same section that Judith Barcy was buried in when we were here not too long ago. So when you drive into the gates, you always see this fountain that's below us. So that kind of gives you a clue as to where you wanna go to come up here. And Judith was buried just over here, but Bonnie Lee Bakley is down the hill a little bit. It's kind of sad that people are leaving discarded takeout food containers in the cemetery, but people are people, right? So here's Judith Barcy. We were just here not too long ago. I think Bonnie is right over here. It looks like I found her. You can see the road that we came up here on, these two trees right here. And she's buried right here. And since she wasn't extremely famous herself, a lot of what we know about her life came out during the trial. And sadly, for someone who used to tell people that being with a celebrity was basically like being with royalty, it made you feel better than anyone else. I don't know that being tied with a celebrity the way that she ended up is really the way you want to go remembered. She was linked to, at various times, Dean Martin, Frankie Valli, Gary Busey, um, Christian Brando, 
and of course Robert Blake. And unfortunately, she had dinner with Robert Blake, her husband, of a little over a year on the night of her death. We'll talk about that. We'll go over to the restaurant where it happened outside of, but here's her grave. No birth or death dates. No one beside her that she knows. And buried with Robert Blake's last name, her 10th husband. So unfortunately, a lot of what we know about Bonnie Lee Bakley, as I said, is what we found out and what people accused her of or what her history led to. And a lot of her history showed that she had run mail order businesses where she would send out nude photographs. She was posting male companion ads and that's a lot of how she made her money. But she, like I said, she was also married 10 times. Her first husband, well, it was claimed that she married him when she was 18 for a specific dollar amount because he was an immigrant and then divorced him while well, had it annulled and then called immigration and had him removed and then married her second cousin, um, had two children with him and that was one of the longest marriages that she had. But it's crazy from like marriage number four till number eight, almost all of them, whatever year she was married in, that it was also annulled that same year. So it, there's a lot of like uh, accusations during the trial that she was a con artist and that a lot of how she made her money not only through those um, ads and everything that I had already mentioned was that she, um, you know, she was milking these people for money and then would invest the money in properties, had quite a few houses in Memphis, one outside of Los Angeles, but her real goal was to be a celebrity and when she came out to Los Angeles she tried to be an actor and model and it didn't really um, take off or anything. She actually went by the name Lee Bonnie and eventually, like I said, started dating celebrities. And one of these was Christian Brando, the son of Marlon Brando, who was at the time locked up in prison. And she befriended him and was writing him letters for years. And then when he came out of prison, they started up a relationship. Now I don't tell you her backstory and all of those things to make her seem like a bad person, it's just part of her story that eventually led to what we would all find out later. And she started dating Christian Brando. She ended up becoming pregnant and originally thought that it was Christian's baby, but wasn't completely sure because while she was dating him, she had started dating Robert Blake. And they ended up, she ended up naming the baby after Christian and it had a Brando last name. But once they did a paternity test and found out that Robert Blake was the father, they changed all of the names of the baby <laughs> beginning to end. And um, Robert Blake ended up agreeing to marry Bonnie, although the entire time that they were married, she never lived in his house with him, not in the main house. She and the baby always lived in a guest house on the property. So Bonnie Lee Bakley and Robert Blake once they agreed to be together, they did have a legal agreement that gave uh, temporary custody to Robert Blake and that um, finally Bakley could only see the baby with visitation, but it also stipulated that if they decided to divorce, the person that requested the divorce would lose their rights in the custody. Interesting move. Now, Robert Blake knew that Bonnie Lee Bakley had other children, one of those children um, in 1990, she had claimed was Jerry Lee Lewis's baby. She had went to Memphis, befriended his sister, uh, and then became friends with Jerry and then accused him of being the father. When they did a paternity test, turned out he wasn't the father. Um, she ended up sending that third child to go live with her other two children. She did support that baby, but I think with Robert Blake knowing the history of, you know, her accusations to other celebrities of being the father, he was really apprehensive to protect himself no matter what happened. And what could possibly happen? Well, you could go out to dinner one night and be murdered while you're out waiting in the car for your husband to come back. Let's go to Vitello's and see where that all happened. And it was reported that Bonnie Lee Bakley's attorney did look over the agreement and said that she should not sign it 
that it was a very lopsided agreement and she decided to sign it anyway. Now, of course, Robert Blake was famous for the TV show Beretta. Even during a shutdown like we're going through right now, this is still a pretty busy street and it would have been even busier back in those days. This is the restaurant. This is Vitello's. This is where Robert Blake and Bonnie Lee Bakley came and had that last meal. Robert was actually a frequent visitor here because he didn't live too far from here and a lot of celebrities would come and eat here. And that one night, May 4th, they came here, ate, and then walked back over to where their car was, which is literally right around this corner. And um, apparently Robert forgot his gun in the booth that they were eating in. So he went back into the restaurant to retrieve the gun from the booth. And while he was getting the gun, Bonnie Lee Bakley was shot sitting in her seat. All right, let's give you an idea of what that path would have been like for Robert Blake to come back here, grab his firearm that he left in the seat, and then walk to where he would have parked his car. Now right next to the restaurant is the parking. Quite a bit of parking, but who knows, it could have been full that night because he ended up opting for street parking, which I think a lot of the things involved in this make it very suspicious. Now, where they were parked was actually just past that intersection. That is Kraft and Woodbridge. And the electrical box is still there. So I'll walk you over to it. I'm gonna do this in real time because I want you to kind of have an idea of how long it would have taken him to take her to the car, walk back to the restaurant, get his piece from the booth, and then to come walking back over here. Now where his car was parked was right over here. Don't worry, I'm looking both ways. Where that SUV is parked is where he had his car parked that night. So there's a real time walk and we can still match it up because there was a crime scene photo of the car with the door open right here by this and you actually could see it was right there you could see the side of the electrical box in the photo and then on the other side you can see the fence picket fence and that garage so it would have been right here So Robert Blake did end up beating the murder rap. He was found not guilty and apparently the way that they did that was that um, they had brought stuntmen out and Robert Blake's own bodyguard trying to implicate them into this and somehow and Robert Blake's defense attorney just attacked the credibility of the people that he was claimed to have hired and also attacked the um, credibility of Bonnie Lee Bakley in her life saying that she was a con artist and that this was probably someone that she had conned out of money trying to get revenge which is pretty sad because you know we'll never know whether he did it or not but they did have a baby together who now had a father who was being tried for murder was sitting in jail and a mother who is now gone and so now she's an adult and was raised with not knowing her father and not knowing, not even remembering, she said in an interview, she doesn't even remember her mother. Robert Blake was found not guilty. However, Bonnie Lee Bakley's children sued him in a civil suit and ended up winning that. And apparently one of the persuading factors was that they had brought up um, 
Robert Blake's bodyguard Earl's girlfriend and ask her if she thought that Earl and Robert were implicated in this and she waited for a long time and then eventually said yes she did believe that they were implicated in this and Robert Blake lost a 30 million dollar judgment um, and then I believe disputed it and they cut that in half last I saw he had done an interview where he was living in an apartment I always like to relate these vlogs to my life if I can, and I mentioned early on that this was the first big high profile celebrity thing that happened when I first moved here. But after he was tried and he was found not guilty, I went to Shelly Winter's birthday party and he appeared. I don't know who invited him, but he came over the gate and uh, walked into the party and people treated him like nothing had ever happened. I kid you not, a white haired Robert Blake came walking in Shelly Winter's side gate to her I think it was her 84th birthday party and I was standing right by the gate and when he popped his head over I was noticeably <laughs> startled and he walked in and I saw people that knew him walk up to him hey Robert how's it going good to see you I was really shocked but then again now I think about it what did I expect did I expect them to say hey man good job beating a murder rap Vitello's may look different than it did back when this all happened, but it is still a very popular celebrity hangout and eatery. Now let's head over, even though it looks way different because it's been changed, let's go see where Robert Blake was living at the time of this happened and where Bonnie Lee Bakley and the baby would have been living. Robert Blake's house was literally a three minute drive from Vitello's, or from the crime scene. So, this was the property. You can't really see anything because of the gates and stuff, but the main house was Robert Blake's house and the guest house was where Bonnie Lee Bakley lived. He sold this after the murder and everything and sold it to Alex Kingston from ER and she apparently remodeled the whole place and sold it and never even lived in it. And then this is literally Caddy Corner from the Robert Blake house. I don't know what's going on here, but I love it. That's awesome. Strongman contest. That's great. So cool. <laughs> Now what the heck was going on here while I was gone? You and I went for a big long walk before I went and did the vlog and then I come back and you're just chilling. Everybody's got to see that face jaw. You know they do. Man, what a sad story for their poor daughter. I saw in an interview where she said she just wants to get to know her dad now. She doesn't want to know anything that happened. She doesn't want to know whether he did it. She doesn't want to know any answers now. So. There you go. Hope you all enjoyed this vlog. Danielle, I hope you enjoyed this as your Patreon sunglass vlog. And thank you, Lori Carito, Randy Cantley, Stephanie Marie, and E. Smith for becoming my newest Patreons. We'll see you all next time. Have a great night and goodbye.